Welcome to our coaching video. Developing coaches may find coaching the clean and jerk a difficult and complex task. The purpose of this video is to provide a tool that demonstrates a simple, easy to follow teaching progression that developing coaches can use to teach their athlete the clean and jerk. This video is not meant to be a rigid structure or an exhaustive template. It is a broad framework for strength and conditioning coaches to use depending on the level, ability and training age of their particular athlete. Thus, coaches may find that they are able to progress certain athletes quicker and not need to teach each and every progression. These progressions can still be returned to when technical errors arise and can also be included as part of the athlete's warm-up. This video is a highly useful tool for developing strength and conditioning coaches, particularly those that have an understanding of the technical model for the clean and jerk but not vast experience teaching this in a progressive based system. The receiving position of the clean is the front squat. This is where the bar is racked on the lifter's shoulders to allow support by the torso. It is critical that the athlete understands that the barbell is not supported by the hands or the arms. The zombie squat is an exercise that can be used to introduce the position necessary to support the bar on the shoulders without the assistance of the hands. The athlete will set up with the bar or dowel across the shoulders without gripping the bar, the arms extended horizontally. Pushing the shoulders forward and slightly up creates a stable shelf for the bar. This should be in contact with the throat and behind the peak of the shoulder musculature. Once the bar is secured in this position, the athlete should squat with no movement of the bar, which will require the torso to remain upright, back extended, and arms up and shoulders forward. An important note for this exercise is to make sure that the athlete understands that pushing forward of the shoulders is created by scapular protraction and not by the rounding of the upper back. If this is the case, then this movement of the scapula without spinal flexion must be practiced in isolation. Once the athlete is comfortable with this and able to squat without movement of the bar, then he or she will be ready to progress to the front squat. The front squat is the receiving position and recovery movement for the clean portion of the lift and is therefore highly important when teaching the clean. The bar is racked on the lifter's shoulders and is not supported by the hands. The shoulders act as a shelf for the bar and whilst the hands provide security, and stop the bar being lost forward in this position. The weight is supported by the shoulders themselves. Keeping the elbows high will further secure the bar's position. The importance of maintaining an upright torso during the squatting movement will become extremely clear to the athlete. The recovery out of the bottom position of the squat is aided by the effort to drive the elbows up, further encouraging an upright torso position. This image shows the feet during the start position. It shows the feet in the pulling position where the bar should be directly over the balls of the feet and the heels approximately under the hips. The degree to which the feet are turned out will vary between athlete to athlete and what they individually find comfortable but is normally between five to 10 degrees of external rotation. The grip width is also an aspect of the starting position that can vary amongst lifters. The basic starting position is half a fist width or more just outside of the shoulders. This allows for a front rack position where the hands will not be in contact with the shoulders and the bar will be in contact with the athlete's upper thigh when standing in a tall position. As an athlete progresses, he or she may choose to alter the hand positions depending on their individual needs. For the clean and jerk, a hook grip is used to maintain control of the barbell during the lift by creating a powerful hook on the bar. This is a pronated grip where both palms face the lifter. The thumb is trapped between the bar and the fingers. The fingers actively pull the thumb around the bar, creating a powerful grip. This may be the first 
or first and second fingers depending on hand size of the athlete. When a hook grip is used it may feel uncomfortable or may even be painful. Although using it consistently will allow the athlete to become comfortable with this and over time it will feel normal. With the foot position, grip width and grip type learnt, the athlete can now progress. As its name suggests, this drill is simply a jump from the mid-hang position. It provides the athlete an opportunity to feel a violent and abrupt explosive action of the hips and knees from the power position whilst controlling the bar. The athlete should establish the feeling of the explosive effort timing of the fast extension of the hips and knees together. Starting in the mid-hang position, the athlete jumps vertically whilst fully extending the hips, whilst actively pushing the bar into the hips. This action must be short and violent. With the support positions established to an acceptable level as decided by the coach, the athlete can progress to the movements that will deliver them to these positions. This can be achieved by breaking down the whole movement into a series of smaller sections to isolate different parts of the lift. Such movements and positions can be ingrained into the athlete and can eventually be assembled together to produce the entire movement. The progression of these drills will vary athlete to athlete and as we said from the outset, this video is a framework whereby the coach can make decisions on such progressions depending on the performance of the athlete being coached. This drill from the mid-hang position puts the athlete in the position for the start of the all-important second pull. This allows for familiarisation of the proper position and timing. From the mid-hang position, the athlete aggressively extends the knees and hips, pushing the bar into the upper thighs to avoid it moving out in front of the body. The purpose of this next drill is to teach the athlete the delivery of the barbell into the front rack position on the shoulders. The key factor is that the athlete must actively bring the bar to the shoulders and not just drop down underneath it. The elbows must be brought round as quickly as possible and correctly time the opening of the hands to allow the barbell to slide into position. From the scarecrow position, with elbows flexed and elevated as much as possible as shown, the athlete pulls the bar up and back to the shoulders and rotates the elbows around the bar quickly. As the bar is delivered to the shoulders, it rests in the front rack position. If the athlete is struggling with the front rack position and mobility restrictions around this, this is a potential drill that can be used. This drill can also include techniques such as PNF to aid in the increase in range of motion for the athlete and help them to improve their front rack position. This drill is the isolated arm movement of the third pull with no movement from the legs or hips. This section builds upon the front rack delivery by including the initial pull of the bar from arm's length against the thighs into the scarecrow position, from which the turnover is commenced. Coaching points include not leaning over the bar or allowing the shoulders to round forward. This should be started slowly and increased to full speed ensuring correct movement of the bar and the elbows. The elbows must be turned out to the sides and the bar kept in close proximity to the body. The movement should be fluid and fast. Building on the learning of the upward acceleration of the bar and its delivery to the front rack position, the introduction of the movement of pulling under the bar can be introduced. Starting from the scarecrow position, the athlete will perform the same movement with the arms but will simultaneously transition the feet from the pulling position mentioned previously to the receiving position of the front squat and will squat under the bar. 
This drill must be performed fast due to the need for the movement of the feet. The objective is minimal foot elevation but maximal foot speed during the transition. The depth of the receiving position can be started in a quarter squat and increased in depth as the athlete is able. The coach is looking for a smooth delivery of the bar to the rack position and stability with correct positioning of the receiving position. This drill progresses from the scarecrow position to the tall position. With minimal upwards movement of the bar and it remaining close to the body, the athlete will transition the feet from the pulling to receiving positions and squat down under the bar, receiving it in the rack position. Starting from catching in a quarter squat position and progressing to deeper ranges will allow the athlete to become familiar with the basic movement and gain confidence with receiving the bar in deeper positions. This drill can be used later if they need work on a slow or inaccurate third pull. The next drill assembles the previous components into a clean from the mid-hang position. Beginning in the mid-hand position, the athlete will extend his or her hips and aggressively drive against the ground. At the end of extension, the athlete will pull under the bar, utilising the skills and movements that have been practised in the previous drills. Once again, the receiving of the bar can start in a quarter squat or power position and can be progressed to deeper squatting ranges and a full clean as the athlete is able. The previous drills will allow an athlete to learn and perform a power clean and clean from the mid-hang position. The next stage of the learning process can move the athlete to starting positions from the floor. It is from this position that the athlete can commence drills aiming at learning the first pull. The barbell is placed over the balls of the feet. Using the hook grip as already learnt by the athlete, the arms will be straight and outside of the knees. They will be orientated approximately vertical from a side view with shoulders over or slightly in front of the bar. Hips will be higher than the knees. The feet will be in the pulling position with knees flared out to the sides as much as the arms will allow. The back should remain in a neutral lumbar lordotic curve with the arms internally rotated so the elbows point along the line of the bar. This drill can be used if the athlete struggles with the start position as it allows for the bar to start at a higher position. From here the athlete can progress to lower blocks and eventually the floor once the coach is happy that the correct positions are met. This is another drill that can be implemented should the athlete struggle with the start position. Here the coach helps facilitate additional range and also ingrains correct starting positions. The athlete can then hold these positions for a specified amount of time, for example 5 seconds, until they are eventually able to naturally get into the position themselves. Once the athlete is comfortable with the start position, learning to separate the bar from the floor can commence. The three pause positions of the segment deadlift are one inch off of the floor, at the knee and at mid to upper thigh. Each position should be held for two to three seconds before moving to the next. After the final position, the athlete will finish with complete extension of the hips and knees. This drill can be used to help teach the athlete the correct positioning during the pull of the bar from the floor to the upper thigh where the final explosive effort will take place. The halting deadlift is performed just as the segment deadlift is, but without the first two pauses. This is a progression from the segment deadlift once it can be performed correctly. The positions of the segment deadlift should still be performed in an identical manner, just without the pauses and in a smooth, accurate manner.
The clean pull exercise finishes with the athlete fully extended on the balls of the feet and shrugging fully. This exercise can be used when the athlete can make the correct positions but could be limited by strength or power or by technique. The loads used during this exercise should allow for a reasonably quick extension and these loads can vary depending on the training outcome required by the coach. Pulls can be performed from varying heights of hang positions or block positions also. This may be to train particular ranges of motion that the coach deems an athlete needs to improve on. Therefore they can be used as technique improving drills using lighter loads but also as a strength building exercise using heavier loads. The clean pull can be included in a combination drill such as this one where a clean pull is followed by a full clean in the same set. This will help ingrain proper pulling positions before commencing the full clean. The power variation of the clean is mechanically identical to the clean with the only difference being the height at which the bar is received. A power clean must have the bar received and stopped with the thighs at or above horizontal in relation to the floor. This means the athlete must not ride the bar down into a deeper squat position. This can be used in training the clean for a variety of reasons. These can be to train speed and precision as the bar will need to be pulled higher for training a violent second pull, a fast turnover of the bar or due to lack of mobility of an athlete to meet lower receiving positions. The full clean starts from the floor and is received in a full squat position. The recovery ends with the athlete stood upright with the bar in the front rack position. It is from this position that the jerk portion of the clean and jerk can commence. This is the second and final stage of the clean and jerk lift and is where the barbell is lifted from the shoulders to overhead. In essence, the athlete creates force against the platform to accelerate the bar upwards. The force is then removed and the athlete pushes his or her self underneath it. The grip width will differ from person to person with positives and negatives applying to different positions. From the clean front rack position, the athlete will push the hands in as deeply under the bar as possible, lifting the chest and spreading the lats. The shoulders must continue to be pushed forward and elevated slightly to maintain a secure shelf for the bar. Elbows should remain slightly in front of the bar. The arm and hand positions will vary with each athlete depending on the arm length and flexibility of the athlete. There is an opportunity to shift the grip from the clean grip to the jerk grip width, but limiting this shift will improve the performance of the lift. For the jerk, the feet should be in the drive position. This is similar to the pulling position, as it will vary from athlete to athlete, but it is with the weight over the heels. To enter the dip position, the athlete simply bends the knees, allowing the hips and shoulders to travel downwards vertically. The feet should remain flat on the floor and the spine in neutral, as can be seen here. The first decision to be made is to decide which leg the athlete will lead with. By simply instructing the athlete to step forward or perform a lunge, the preferred leg can be spotted. Athletes can always experiment with both legs and decide which is most comfortable for themselves. The width of the feet should be approximately that of their squat stance. The lead foot will be flat on the floor with the weight towards the heel and foot either straight or turned in slightly. The heel of the rear foot will be elevated and weight will be driven through the ball of the foot. This rear foot will be turned in to keep the foot in line with the lower leg. The length of the split position should be so that the front shin is vertical with the front thigh at approximately 20 to 40 degrees relative to the floor. 
The back knee must remain flexed and weight approximately evenly distributed between both feet or with slightly more weight towards the front leg. The torso should be vertical with the spine in neutral curvature. Once familiar with the correct split position, the transition from the drive to the receiving split position can be drilled. The movement should be straight down and not forwards. The rear foot should connect with the platform very slightly before the lead leg and should be elevated less than the lead leg when transitioning. The athlete will recover by stepping one third of the way back with the front foot and the rest of the way forward with the back foot. With the feet in the jerk position and the bar across the back of the shoulders as he or she would be for a back squat, the athlete will grip the bar with their jerk grip width. The elbows should be orientated downwards as much as possible with a neutral upright posture. The athlete will simply press the bar straight up without moving the torso. Retracting the shoulder blades and extending the elbows will finish the lift. A vertical bar path is key for this drill also an active overhead position keeping the scapulae tightly fixed. This drill is a progression from the press behind the neck and is progressed to the bar starting in the jerk rack position in front of the body. Whilst the purpose of the press behind the neck is to familiarize the athlete with a proper overhead position, the purpose of the press is to teach the athlete how to correctly move the bar from the shoulders to overhead. This requires some horizontal movement of the torso, the head and the bar. The athlete must press the bar in as a direct line as possible and in order to do this the face must be pulled backwards out of the way. Once the bar has passed the head the athlete must push his or her head forward in order to achieve a finished overhead position. This is a great strength training drill and is also very good for training the position and timing of the dip and drive. It introduces the athlete to the idea of initiating an upwards drive of the bar with a dip and subsequent drive of the legs. Starting with the bar behind the neck gives the athlete the opportunity to concentrate on the dip and drive without having to worry about the bar path. The athlete dips by bending the knees only and must not be so abrupt that the bar is separated from its front rack position on the shoulders. An aggressive drive vertically will accelerate the bar vertically. As the knees reach full extension, the arms must push to finish the lift. Once the athlete becomes competent with the push press behind the neck, they can be progressed to the bar starting in the front rack position. As with the behind the neck variation, the dip and drive will take place. As the legs reach near full extension, the arms will continue to move the bar vertically. The athlete will pull his or her face backwards to clear the path for the bar to pass in front of the face. The push press is a great developer for pressing strength, elbow lockout ability and correct and consistent dip depth and timing. The power jerk is a lot less common in competition, although it is an excellent drill in the jerk learning progression. The press has introduced the athlete to the movement of the arms and the push press has taught the initial acceleration of the bar with the legs and the transition between the leg and then the arm drive. The power jerk introduced is the idea of moving the body under the bar without the distraction of a change in foot position. As the legs finish their extension, the athlete transitions under the bar into the receiving position and the elbows lock out as the feet reconnect with the platform. This drill introduces the movement of driving the body down under the bar. Starting with the bar behind the neck allows a simple bar path and torso position. 
the athlete will press the bar halfway up and pause. The remaining movement is the push of the body underneath the bar with the feet transitioning from the driving to the receiving position. With the athlete understanding the movement of driving down underneath the bar, the bar can now be brought to the front of the body where it will be in the full jerk. The athlete can now practice the action of moving his or her face out of the way with the bar already pressed halfway as they drive underneath the bar aggressively. When the athlete is comfortable with the basic movement of the jerk, the bar can be moved to the rack position in front. We're now combining the dip and drive element of the push press, the drive under of the tall jerk, and the arm movement, torso shift, and bar position of the press. The dip and drive phase remains no different. As the legs finish their extension, the athlete begins transitioning the feet from the drive position to the power jerk receiving position. As the bar leaves the shoulders and the feet begin transitioning, the athlete must pull their face back to clear the path for the bar by continuing to push with the arms as the feet transition the athlete will push their body down under the bar into a quarter squat overhead position. This next drill emphasizes the motion of driving the hips under the bar during the split jerk. With the bar in the jerk rack position, the athlete enters a partial split position, approximately two thirds the length and depth of his or her full split receiving position. The athlete performs the dip and drive, and as the bar leaves the shoulders, the front foot leaves the platform and is placed into a full split receiving position with elbows locked out as the front foot reconnects with the platform. The athlete is now familiar with the split receiving position and understands moving into this position. Following the same dip and drive, the athlete will now transition his or her feet into the split position and secure lockout as the feet reconnect with the platform. The athlete will then recover from this position by stepping one third of the way back with the front foot and the remaining distance forward with the back foot. Some athletes with shoulder issues or previous injuries may find the behind the neck variations more comfortable and this may offer a potential means to overload this movement pattern with the triple overhead extension uh, without aggravating their shoulder. Others may prefer the conventional split jerk. As with the split jerk behind the neck, the athlete will now piece together all of the movements, but will be starting with the bar in the front rack position. Again, his or her face will have to be pulled backwards to allow the bar to pass. When missing a lift, the athlete must guide the bar away from the body and move out of the way as quickly as possible. A miss in front means the athlete needs to jump backwards and push the bar forwards, making sure the lead leg is moved backwards quickly. When missing behind, the athlete should guide the bar backwards and down whilst quickly jumping forwards away from the bar. By piecing together all of the above movements and practicing the drills, the athlete may be ready to complete a full clean and jerk. As mentioned previously, this video is a tool to be used by a developing strength and conditioning coach to teach the lift in a logical and stepwise manner. It is not meant as a completely rigid structure and drills can also be taken independently to use where the coach feels appropriate in an athlete's training program or warm up. Thank you for watching.